This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial and in this lesson we're going to take the next logical step in our look at getting footage into Media Composer and of course we're going to talk about what is transcoding. Now I've decided to take this lesson and break it down into two parts because I really think that it needs that. In part one we're going to talk about getting the clips in and what exactly is going on with them when you get them into Media Composer. Then in part two, we're going to talk about the actual transcode process and all the little bells and whistles that you're going to find inside the transcode window so that you can make sure that you have things set up properly so that your footage looks the way that you want before you start editing. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for my Windows friends out there. And what I have done is I have AMA linked to a few clips in here. Now, what's important for me to, of course, point out is that if you're using a version of Media Composer pre-version 8.4, of course, it will be referred to as AMA linking to. If you're talking about the most current version of Media Composer, obviously, it's no longer referred to as AMA linking to anymore. It's simply referred to as link to media. Okay, now, I've linked to these different types of clips because I want to go through sort of you know, common scenarios that you're going to run into when you're editing and how you're going to get in and tackle situations that you might run into. Now, uh, there's a few things going on here. You'll notice right away that I have three different types of shots. I've got a standard DNX 175X. This is a 1920 by 1080, 23976 frames per second clip. Now, what's important to keep in mind here is that if you take a look at the format of the project that I'm working in, I'm actually working in a 720p project. Now, I've actually done that on purpose but we'll get back to that in just a second. So the next type of clip that I have brought in is an Airy Alexa file in Apple ProRes 444. You can see that this is a 2K clip, 2048 by 1152. And last but certainly not least, I've brought in a red 4K uh, clip right here. The aspect ratio is 233 to 1, 24 frames per second. And each one of these clips you can see has a little bit something different going on with them. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the most basic clip. This is gonna be your most basic example right here. And all this is, is just a stock shot here. Nothing too fancy. But now, like I said, with these clips, most people would think, well, you're just gonna select it, you're gonna start transcoding it, and then you're good to go. Now, believe it or not, there's actually another step that I have to add in before we do that. Now, it's gonna be very simple with the first clip, a little bit more complicated with the second clip, and then in the, even a little bit more complicated than that with the third clip. Now, like I said, this is just a standard 1920 by 1080, 23976 frame per second clip. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at what is going on under the hood. So I'm simply gonna right click on the clip and I'm gonna navigate right down here to source settings. Now you're gonna see that the first tab that I'm brought to is frame flex, but I'm actually gonna take this all the way back to the linked plugin tab, the very first tab, and you'll see that under settings, we have the default settings right here because I don't have anything you know, saved or anything like that. If I did, I could load those up, but what's important with this window is that this is where if Media Composer doesn't happen to know things like the field order, you can get in and set it. If it doesn't know the field layout, you can select that as well, and you can even select your graphic or video level parameter right here from within the linked plugin tab. Now in this case, I'm just gonna leave it as do not modify. We're not gonna change anything in here because everything is correct for the purposes of what we're doing. The next tab over, color encoding. Now again, if I needed to get in and actually choose the sources color space, I could do that right here. But again, I don't need to change anything right now. We're gonna talk a little bit more about this for the next clip, but for right now, this is again, the most basic of examples. So really, I'm only gonna focus on the frame flex window. Now inside the frame flex window, the top section of frame flex is going to tell us about the actual clip itself. You'll see that the raster dimensions of the clip, 1920 by 1080, the image size is of course 1920 by 1080, 16 by nine. The aspect ratio is 16 by nine and the pixel aspect is one to one. Now of course, we could get in and change any one of these parameters if we need to, but like I said, you know, Media Composer has already figured out the information it needs to know about this clip. So what we need to do now is to basically tell 
MIDI Composer, or the FrameFlex window specifically, what is the aspect ratio of the frame that we're taking this into? Now, because it's 720p, 1280 by 720, it stays 16 by 9. So this is what I call an ideal situation. So in most cases, unless I actually wanted to get in and change up the part of the shot that I'm actually looking at by utilizing FrameFlex, I really don't need to adjust anything, okay? So let's actually just put this back the way we had it before. We'll just bring this all the way out here. What I should actually do here is we'll just set this to be zero, zero. Let's make sure we set everything to be zero here, zero. And of course the size will be 100, okay? Just like such, okay? And I'm just gonna cancel out. Let's talk about the next example. And this is actually a good one. This is an Airy Alexa clip. Now you'll see that if you take a look at the final clip here, it actually looks not too bad. But if we go back to the original clip here, I'm just gonna to come to my media drive. I'm gonna come into my Alexa folder. If you take a look at the original footage in here, you can see that it's very washed out. It's actually shot in log color space, okay? So what is going on in Media Composer? What have I done to this clip? Well, believe it or not, I actually haven't done anything. All I'm gonna do is simply right click on the clip. I'm gonna come down to source settings and you'll see that if I come to the color encoding section, Media Composer already knew that this was an Airy Alexa clip. So it's actually put the source color space and it's set it to be an Airy Alexa log C to rec 709 color space. If I was actually to remove this and say delete, that clip would go back to being the way it was before. So let's actually come back in here and we wanted Airy Alexa to log C color space. Now what I should probably do here is actually just cancel out. We'll just come back in here, right click source settings. There we go. Everything is now good. Of course, the linked plugin, you'll see that as I switch that, it goes back to looking like the original clip did. And again, again, we're all fine with everything that's in here. And frame flex. Now you'll see again, the most important thing is checking that aspect ratio, because of course, because this is larger than HD, what's gonna happen is because the aspect ratio is correct, it's gonna be proportionally scaled down to fit inside my frame, okay? So all I'm gonna do now is simply say cancel. and Let's talk about the last example here. Let's talk about this red clip. Now, as soon as I bring the red clip into the preview window, you're gonna notice something is going on. The clip is stretched. This is not what we want. We actually wanna make sure that this clip has the proper aspect ratio. So how do we get in and alter this? Well, it's very simple. Again, exactly like we've done before. We're gonna to come to our clip, right click. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that in most cases, I'm gonna say in most cases, you adjust the source settings before you transcode a clip. Now, when we talk about the actual transcode process itself, you'll see that there's, a, you know, obviously with every rule, there's a couple of exceptions. So in this case, you know, we're gonna have a couple of exceptions to this, but generally, you're gonna do all your source setting changes before you transcode your clips. What I'm gonna do is simply come down to source settings. And right off the bat, we can see something's already going on here in the FrameFlex window. Now we'll talk about this window first before we go back and talk about everything else here, okay? So because, and you know, FrameFlex comes up first, we may as well talk about it first. So right now, the big thing, and I'd mentioned this before, is that when you have a clip, especially utilizing FrameFlex on a larger than HD project, Media Composer's automatically gonna wanna downscale that clip to fit inside of the 16 by nine frame. And you can see, Right here, we've got a very wide shot, almost like a Panavision shot here. And you can see this is our Media Composer frame here. So what we wanna do is we wanna do one of two things. We either want to letterbox this clip or we're gonna to wanna to zoom in on it. Now, to letterbox the clip is actually very simple. All you need to do is simply come over to reformat and instead of stretching it all the way up to fill the frame, just select pillar box or letterbox. Now, as soon as you say apply, that's gonna be immediately updated in your timeline, and basically you're gonna be all set to go. So if I say okay, there we go. Okay, so let's come back into the clip here, right click source settings. We're back in the frame flex window. Now, what if I wanted this clip to actually fill the frame? How would we go about doing that? Well, it's actually, again, very simple. All we would need to do is to simply come down to the frame flex aspect ratio and instead of being 233, let's set this to be 16 by 9, okay? Now, as soon as we do that, you're gonna notice that we've now zoomed in on the window. We're now no longer stretching this to fill the frame. We're actually cropping this off. And we can adjust this a little bit, just like such. So now we actually have the clip, and if I say apply and say okay, 
this clip is now filling the frame in the proper aspect ratio. And what's also cool about this is that if we were to step into the clip and I was to step into effects mode here, you'll see that inside of effects mode, I can see the frame flex window. So what I could conceivably do is just zoom in and eliminate that third person from the shot. Now, of course, you're seeing it's looking, you know, not that great because I'm not looking at this at the absolute best possible quality. There we go. Looking much, much, much better. Okay. Now, there's something else that I do want to mention about this clip. Okay. And I'm just going to step out of effects mode here. And let's come back to our source settings. I'm going to right click and let's come down to source settings because with red clips specifically, we do have a lot of great under the hood features that appear inside of the linked plugin tab because red clips have a whole bunch of parameters that you can adjust on the actual clip itself. Now you'll know this from using an application like Red Cine X. We have a stripped down version of that right here inside of our source settings. So for example, if I wanted to take this clip and I wanted to make it, let's say, oh, I don't know, black and white, all I'm going to do is just pull the saturation completely out of that shot, simply say apply, and now this shot is in black and white. So this is a way that you can get in and do some great color correction on this shot before you transcode it. What's important to keep in mind is that the instant you transcode this clip, everything as far as your uh, as, as far as your linked plugin settings for your red parameters is going to be baked into that shot so you're not going to get a chance to go back and do anything to reset them now of course again you could say well maybe we want, just want to adjust the exposure a little bit maybe we want to bring the contrast you know make it a little bit more contrasty kind of like this here now of course i'm just sort of taking this a little bit to the extreme and of course i can now say apply and i can say okay and this clip, of course, now is ready to be dropped in and worked with in any timeline that I happen to be working on. Now, of course, that does beg the question. Now that I've already applied this clip into the timeline and I've made changes to the original, how do I update the clips that are in my timeline? Well, it's actually very easy. All I'm going to do is simply navigate to the timeline. I'm simply going to right click. I'm going to come down to refresh sequence. I want to refresh, in our case, a couple of things, including the aspect ratio and the color adapters. And you know what? Since I'm right over the linked plugin settings, and that's really what we altered when we were in the red settings making some changes, why don't we refresh this? And now you'll see in my sequence window that as soon as I do it, the sequence is automatically updated to reflect those changes that we made on the original red clip. Now again, of course, remember, like I said, once we were to transcode this, we lose the ability to go in and make any changes in that linked plugin settings window for the red footage. We would still have access to a couple other parameters that we're going to talk about in the next lesson. Okay, so I hope this lesson has shown you that really before you get in and do the actual transcoding of your clips, you're going to want to get in and make sure that you set the source settings exactly the way you want, whether it's with the color adapters, frame flex, or even getting into that linked plugin settings for clips like red clips and really tailor those clips exactly the way that you want them before you get in and transcode them. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.